Sometimes this analogy can show up in our area, okay? You know, same trip, same different thing. And we got a few slides in there that might be a little, you might enjoy it, I hope you do. Uh, but yeah, we want to show you what we do, and, uh, and uh, we're going to just take you, take you for a little while. First of all, I'd like to show you our organizational chart, which is uh, actually, uh, here it is now. Uh, physical plant manager and myself, we have uh, Mike the supervisor, Danny Furr, uh, Ben Rankin, of course, is uh, running the computer for us here. He's our safety coordinator. Our administrative assistant, Ms. Nicole Christman, in the back. Uh, grounds and uh, housekeeping uh, supervisor, Joel Odom, in the back as well. Uh, and let's talk about their staffs. And Joel, you can see Stan, Stan is our ground staff in the back as well. Uh, we have one vacant position in our ground staff that we're hoping to fill very soon because the grass is growing as we speak, so we know we're going to have to cut grass soon, but we hope to fill that in the next week or so. Uh, and then Joel has a housekeeping staff at each of uh, each, uh, the uh, counties, uh, Cleve, South City of Harnett, uh, Cindy Goldston, Randy Fox, and Nancy Guy, those uh, sites. And Danny over here, he has some openings as well. Got uh, lead, two lead, lead maintenance position uh, technician positions open at this time, and again we hope to have interviews in the next week, next couple of weeks for those and hire some folks. Uh, HVAC technicians Eric Butler, uh, our Hornet maintenance supervisor Chris McNeil, and technician down there Ben Stone. Uh, Ken Dowdy is our Chatham lead maintenance person, and then Gary Loposi is the technician at Chatham County. That's kind of what you see, and you don't see a lot of folks up here, you know, you're talking about less than 20 people, you know, to do this job. And, and when, if I go along, you're going to see how much, how, you know, how much it is. It's quite a bit of stuff here to, to cover. We cover a lot of, a lot of uh, territory. Okay. What is a physical plant department? All right. And my experience and past experience is that in industry, it is called maintenance department, okay? In collegiate environments, institutional environments, it's generally called physical plant, physical plant department. So what the responsibilities we have is maintenance of all CCCC facilities and grounds. And that's a short statement, but it covers a broad area, okay? Uh, what is the definition of maintenance? And Webster says maintenance is the upkeep of property or equipment. Now, everybody's got their own little maintenance plan, you know. 
we do, if we have a vehicle, right? Everybody's got to get the oil changed, got to get tires on, got to get inspected and all that. Well, that's the real maintenance plan. We have a maintenance plan for the college as well. But what does that all entail? Let's talk about a little bit about what's under that umbrella. <clears throat> Plumbing systems. And, you know, got to have hot and cold water, right? Got to get the uh, toilets flushing, drain and sewer systems. Uh, we've got sewer lift stations. This one's at Joiner Hall. And you, we all know what that does now, right? A sewer lift pump. It pumps uh, sewage to the city from our facilities. Because this is in a low-lying area and it can't gravity feed, so we have to pump it up the stuff, and you know what stuff is, up to the uh, <laughs> sewer lift station <laughs> up on the side of the road up here at Kelly Drive. So the stuff then from there is put, goes up, pumped up to the sanitary sewer at San City of Santa. Enough about that, okay. Um, water supplies, hot and cold, we talked about water heaters, we got those in every building. Backflow prevention and testing reports that we have to do for the City of Sanford Public Works. And this is a backflow system. And Ben, I'll let you touch on exactly what that uh, what backflow means. Just, some folks might not even know. Okay, thank you, Ronnie. Uh, I'm Ben Rankin. I work out of the physical plant. Uh, as you can see in one of the slides here in the bottom left picture is an actual backflow assembly. Uh, me, as well as two of the technicians here at the school, all certified in testing and repair of these assemblies. They're designed to keep uh, our water that we use here for different systems from infiltrating back into the domestic city water. So that everything comes on our side is ours. These are maintained and tested on a yearly basis. Thank you, Ben. Sinks and faucets. Got them in all the restrooms and in other areas as well. <clears throat> Compressed air system. This is one in Wilkinson Hall that serves the uh, machine shop. It's got a lot of age on it, but she's still kicking along. You know, it's uh, still working, but that is part of a plumbing system is the uh, air compressor. Uh, sprinkler, fire sprinkler systems. We don't have, we have two buildings uh, one in Pittsburgh, the newest buildings, the uh, Sustainable Technology Building and the library that actually has sprinkler systems. We don't have them everywhere. And I think Harnett Health has those as well, the new Harnett Health Building. Um, we have underground water supplies everywhere. Uh, along in, our, in, our, in the ground, all around this campus, uh, water supplies that we have to locate and be very careful when we dig something so we don't hit any of these things. Water valves in the ground and above ground that we have to maintain. Irrigation systems, not everywhere, but we do have some that we uh, irrigate uh, our grounds. And we have, again, three backflow, uh, NC certified backflow inspectors. Uh, ben is one, Eric Butler is one, and uh, Chris McNeil, that party, has his certification. Electrical systems, okay, we've got this everywhere. We gotta have lights, we gotta have power, right? We've got main distribution panels in most of all of our buildings. Uh, switch gear, this is the switch gear system in uh, uh, Joiner Hall building right here. That switch will turn the whole building off right there. <clears throat> and that is switch gear. Electrical panels, you've seen them in all places, everywhere. We have to maintain those as well. Commercial, we have commercial three-phase services, serving motors for fans, pumps, uh, all types of motors throughout for equipment, machinery. Uh, 120 volt, 482 77 volt systems, as well as some single-phase 122 40 volt systems that we have. Transformers, you can see we have multitude, we have this transformed science building being fed by switch gear and the secondary is feeding that uh, distribution panel. Lighting control systems, we have buildings, some of, most of our newer buildings have lighting control panel. That actually will, you can program it to turn lights off at night uh, and bring them back on in the morning automatically through a program. Um, 
we, we had trouble with one of these last week at the uh, science building. Uh, actually, it, uh, the inside two, uh, two of the modules inside actually shorted out and knocked the lights out in the building. Uh, maybe Thursday night, I think it was, something like that. Uh, but anyway, we got it. We think we got it fixed. We got to get one more module changed. The technician came yesterday and helped us with that, switching out two of those. So we're going to be back full, back in good shape here before long. But that was kind of a surprise that that happened. But again, that's one of those things that we do. Okay. Lighting fixtures, of course, you know, the switches for those, general power receptacles for whatever, computers, uh, pieces of equipment, you know, office, uh, office uh, machine, machinery and so forth, whatever you got, you know, we gotta have power for that. Uh, parking lot and exterior lighting that we maintain, and this is important for security reasons at night, to light the place up when folks are here at uh, going back and forth to their cars, and we try to stay on top of that and keep the lights on in the parking lots. Fire alarm systems, and, uh, and ben, ben was just talking about one of those a while ago. He got a phone call. Uh, he got several of them last night, you think? Yeah. From, and it's a communication call. It's not necessarily a fire alarm when we get a call. If something happens to the system, and, and these are on like a network, something blips you know on the network and we get uh, we get a phone call like in the middle of the night and, you know, that's when it always happens but uh, here and there we work on that but you know these are protection they they for our buildings they have uh, you seen the pull house out throughout our buildings where if it's a fire you can pull the house it will uh, trip the alarm we have smoke detectors and we have duct detectors and our uh, HVAC ducts to detect smoke and it will set the fire alarm off Security systems, not on all of our buildings, but we have, we have quite a few buildings that have security systems across the three counties. And we may have to maintain those as well. We do electrical installations in-house, and we do some design on electrical installations as well. If you have, say you're gonna uh, purchase some piece of equipment that you need, it's gonna need power, and we need to know that, and we need to plan accordingly, we can do an electrical design for that piece of equipment or even for a renovation, a small renovation project, we can uh, we can do that in-house as well. We have two licensed electrical contractors uh, licensed by the state of North Carolina on our staff. Now they're on vacation, where are they going? That could be us, you know, we all smiling going down the road, you know, but here you're, you're gonna run into some things here before you get before you know it, not, not far down the road. Facilities maintenance. <clears throat> this is uh, things that are done basically daily, janitorial, custodial maintenance, and uh, a lot of this comes under uh, Joel Logan's umbrella. Uh, floor care, carpet and vinyl composition tile, which uh, wax, uh, strip and wax floors uh, on a regular basis window cleaning, supplies for restrooms, and maintenance of the restrooms, general housekeeping. Uh, and we do our guys police parking lots and grounds for trash daily. Uh, you see them out early in the morning <coughs> on the golf carts and generally late in the afternoon, uh, they're picking up trash that, uh, that's deposited in our grounds and our parking lots. And we do manage contracts with janitorial companies in some of our buildings and some of our sites. General building maintenance, okay? If you got a building, you're gonna have to do some things occasionally. You're gonna have to do some painting. You're gonna have to uh, do some floor repair, replacements, possibly. Uh, door maintenance. And if you think about doors, you know, you think, well, how many people go in and out every day? How many times does that door swing? Well, you know, every day and then how many times a year, you know? So it's, it, we have to do maintenance on our doors to keep them operational. Of course, locks and keys is another uh, a lock. Of, we generally have to service some locks that give problems from time to time. That's just uh, another part of our, uh, our maintenance. A telekey system, and most of you folks may have one of these, uh, or some of you might. It is an electronic key that is programmed by Nicole Chrisman 
in our office to let you into a building possibly after hours or you know you need to uh, you may have one just to get in your building whenever you need to all buildings don't have IntelliKey locks but a lot of the ones on this campus do so she, she handles and uh, maintains that system elevators uh, have to be working and as the end mentioned we were coming up here we had an issue with this elevator uh, right outside the hall here uh, last week or, yeah so my folks started getting stuck in it and that's not good you know it always happens at night but they got them out and uh, we got it uh, we got it fixed we pretty sure we got it fixed now a technician came out and worked on the elevator uh, maintenance of our sidewalks and um, I just uh, I know we've done some work on those and then just tell us a little bit about what, what we do on the sidewalks which okay um, not too long ago uh, or the physical plant staff along with Dr. Price, we got together and did a uh, audit, so to speak, of uh, the walking services in all three counties. We found out that there was a need for some sidewalk repair. Um, we did some checking and found out that we could rent the equipment and do the work in-house. Uh, so that's what we chose to do. Uh, it was a grinding project. Uh, we ground the sidewalks actually down and leveled them out. We had different locations in all three counties. Uh, a very successful uh, project, but there's more to do, but it was a tremendous help. Yeah. Signage, uh, and you know, we've got signs all over our campuses. And, you know they, they fade and they go bad and you know you have to replace them and so forth and uh, Ben usually works with the Depart Department of Corrections to, because they make signs and we can order them and replace them uh, and put new signs in so that's something else and also I touch on the signs uh, Nicole actually does all the signs for offices and classrooms and so forth that you see these little the ones with your name on it that's what Nicole actually makes those on a machine in our office Parking lot maintenance. Yeah, okay, you've got uh, holes in your parking lot that potholes come in it. You know, you've got to maintain those. Our group does that. Uh, time to time, we'll do a seal coating operation, which is usually a contracted project. And then again, from time to time, the uh, lines in the sidewalks fade, and we have to go back and get those uh, painted again. So that's part of our operation as well. Okay, HVAC maintenance. Anybody, uh, most of them might not, not know what that means, but it is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. It's conditioning the space is what it is. And these machines, uh, liquid chillers, we've got uh, uh, all types, and uh, even conventional type units that you see uh, at your residence. We change our filters regularly. That is part of our preventive maintenance program. <clears throat> clean the coils and by coils I mean like this chiller has a coil here very similar to a radiator that actually um, takes the heat out of the uh, out of the air out of the uh, water and puts it out into the air but you have to have a good heat transfer and if you've got coils that are dirty and they are outside they get rained on and we have to spray and clean those with a chemical uh, about twice a year generally once but before the cooling season so we can have uh, a good heat transfer and uh, save the energy. Uh, chiller maintenance, and that is a liquid chiller. That, uh, we have to maintain those as well. <clears throat> we manage setback schedules, which means at certain times we can turn, we can set back the heating and air conditioning, like on weekends uh, or overnight when no one's here. And we have some buildings, uh, newer buildings, and some of our older ones that have a digital uh, control system that we can access through computer software and make changes on our setback schedule where it would not run on the weekends. And like in the summer, we do four tens. We cut it off on Fridays, and uh, you know that way we're saving energy. So that's that's a good thing. We can do setback schedule. Uh, chemical treatment because uh, that involves liquid uh, chill water lines and hot water lines and what happens is if you don't do a chemical treatment on your water it will actually 
degrade to the point to where it will start corroding the pipes, and that's a bad thing. You don't want that to happen because you'll have to start changing out piping. So we do a chemical treatment uh, that actually preserves, the, uh, keeps it from rusting inside the pipes and so forth. So that's one that we do. Uh, boiler maintenance. Uh, we do heat with quite a few boilers across the college, so we have to maintain those boilers and those hot water systems. Pump maintenance, and we've got some pump, yeah, here's a pump right here in the science building, and it's pumping uh, chill water, or and it, and it could be pumping hot water. We have a hot water pumps as well. So we have to pump those through our systems from our evaporators to our condensers, so we can have that heat transfer. But there's a lot of pumps across the college that we have to maintain. We do have a North Carolina licensed uh, HVAC contractor on staff. I would like to mention this, this picture here on the bottom right. This was in the Wilkinson building, and actually these are two, three new boilers that we put in last year to replace two old boilers, like back from the early 1960s, these boilers. So this is much more energy efficient equipment than we had, and now the, these three boilers, one feeds the library, one feeds Wilkinson, and Hockaday Hall building. So before we had two boilers that we had to run one at a time. Now we can run all three or any combination of them serve those buildings. That was a, a really good project we did last year. Okay, grounds maintenance. All right, and I say we had 371 acres, which we don't mow all that every week, but you know, we do have quite a bit of grass that we have to maintain in, in, uh, and acreage as well. But uh, it's 371 acres across three counties using in-house and landscape contractors at some of these locations. Um, we do uh, grass cutting, trimming, pruning. You do it at home, we do it here at the college. Snow removal during the winter months. Now, yeah, and that was, then we had a lot of snow this winter, you know. But we actually, it, it really wasn't that bad on us as it hadn't been in the past because I think it was one instance we came in and had to, to try to do some removal to get classes started. Uh, that was only maybe one day, right, Joel? I think it's right. And, uh, and the rest of the time, Mother Nature was helping us out, you know, getting it melted for us so we could get back to work. Uh, landscape design, we do, uh, our, our group does landscape and design and uh, installations as well. Uh, I'd like to mention, I want to show you this project right here. And this, this picture, you can see it's the, it's the NC uh, telecommunications building is what it is. This one right here. And what happened, you can see, all of this grown up stuff that was there. And that was the original installation. And these were, I guess what we call native plants. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, Joel, yeah, I'm pretty sure native plants. And they just kind of took the place over. And you can see it looks kind of ragged, but it is ragged. So our group did a design, uh, Joel's group did a design to install new, well actually demo all the old stuff, get it out, and then install new landscaping plants and this is actually centipede sod, and it's in the winter, so it's it's it's, it's setting there brown, but it will green up, and it will uh, it'll look good whenever it greens up. So, much cleaner design, much better, you can see. So we're pretty proud of that job. That was that was a good one. Uh, irrigation maintenance of our uh, irrigation system, and we did install irrigation at Telecommunications. I uh, will mention that. Um, we have a certified landscaper on staff. They're standing on the grass. <laughs> vehicles. We have vehicle maintenance as part of our uh, part of our maintenance department or physical plan. Uh, right now, I think it's, this could be a moving target, but I think it's 18 uh, vehicles on the uh, that we use. Now, this is not including vehicles used by uh, like the BLET and emergency services and those folks. These are ones here, basically on this campus. We do, we have a vehicle maintenance schedule uh, to where we say, uh, Nicole basically does this with her pit preventive maintenance program to say, okay, we need to uh, get the Crown Vic, the green, uh, pull it out and take it to get it serviced. She has that schedule of when that's supposed to happen. And all of our trucks and, uh, and vehicles as well. Uh, <clears throat> she maintains that. She also maintains Nicole does the van schedule. Some of you may have, have 
use the van, a uh, college for a field trip, going somewhere, doing something. She's got it scheduled for it. If you will need it, call her. She will schedule it for you. <clears throat> uh, fuel control, we have a gas tank at the shop, and we have, this is emergency services, out where Joey's place, and they've got a gas tank there and a diesel tank, and we install those as well. We have, with the help of contractors. We schedule any repairs needed related to vehicles with local repair shops. So, you know, if something's wrong with one of the cars, call us, let us know. We'll certainly get it in the shop, get it fixed. Ah, the dreaded move form. This is one that not everybody is so happy about, but it's necessary. Uh, and I'll explain why. But, uh, the link to the move form is coming up next, and it is on the internet, college internet, under helpful files by department. You can find this form. The main thing with the form is to complete it completely, get all the information in there as much as you can on, the, on your move, and get appropriate signatures, which means this one, this one, and this one the supervisor and vice president signature. Because what's gonna happen, if, I, if you don't get it, I'm gonna have to send it back, when it gets to me, I'm gonna have to send it back to the VP and let them sign it before anything's gonna happen. And I don't mean to be negative about this, but don't send this form in to me, our group, and think, yeah, okay, you're gonna send it in the day you wanna to move tomorrow. Well, no, it's not, probably ain't gonna happen. You know? It'd be reasonable because you know we we got a schedule of planning our work and what we do today, <coughs> today and uh, it, 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 unless it's an emergency, it, you know this won't happen. We have to put it into our work schedule. So work with us on that one. Okay. Why did the state trooper stop Clark? I remember test on this. Completed move form. Okay, this is 12 months uh, from 2013, 2014. I thought it'd be interesting to see how many moves we made in a year, right? So you can see, and a move could be, it could be, okay, I want to, uh, this person's wanting my filing cabinet. I don't have any more use for it. Move it to her office or his office or wherever, okay? That could be a move form. But that office could be down the hall or it could be from Pittsburgh to Horn County. So you see, Moves are, are, everyone's different. Everything's different. Um, we're up to about 27 moves here. Uh, you see move cabinets to from the XY to Z, move milling machine from Sage Academy to Surplus. You know, and, and these, that's a pretty big piece of equipment. So it takes the machinery to move it and trucks, trailers. Um, computer equipment, and it's the IT gets involved. and, and, and uh, purchasing apartment as well because uh, I think Star no Starlene has a if it's a furniture move and some her company does uh, she has a vendor that does furniture moves so she could be involved in a move or IT could be involved in a move if, if the person's got phone the computer and they're moving to a different office then we got to get Thomas group involved so it's, it's kind of spread it around it, it, it covers not just our group but other groups as well. At the 69 now in 12 months, let's see. We're moving boxes for registration. We're doing all kinds of things. Um, 84, I think we're almost there, okay? 86, 86 moves in 12 months. So, you know, that's, that's you know, quite a bit, but, and, and some of them are bigger than others. I mean, it could be not just moving a filing cabinet, it could be moving the uh, Con Ed from Shawtown to Lillington campus. That was a very big move we did in January with the assistance of the Department of Corrections. We get contract those folks to help us physically move some of this stuff. Oh. What's about to happen? That's what we always wondered. <laughs> we wonder that every day, right? We don't know what's right around the corner, you know. Project form. Here's another the dreaded the device, but it is uh, it is a good it's a good tool for us because we have to know uh, 
what, what's going on and what's coming down the pipe. Uh, the link again is under helpful files by department on the internet. Uh, when you fill out this form, be as specific as you can to describe any project and even attach a sketch, you know, if it's where it's going, what it's going to be, you know, where is it going to, in, what, what room, what building, uh, what are we doing, you know. Uh, attach a link or a hard copy of a specification sheet, uh, I call them cut sheets, of the equipment being purchased or installed, which means, okay, let's say, in a good example we talked about this morning was, uh, you know, maybe cosmetology wants to install a washing machine, okay, and this kind of came up one time, and, you know, they want to put it over here, well, what kind of utilities are required for a washing machine? You got to have water, hot and cold, hot and cold water, you got to have a, a drain system for the washing machine, and you got to have power, right? So, you know, if those things are not in this location, then it could be easily cost multiple times what the washing machine costs to get those utilities in that area. So that's things that we need to review and, and make sure that, you know, what we're doing is the right thing. Well, maybe we need to put it in this location because this is where your utilities are. So that helps us to plan. That's what we need to do. And, you know, it's take a good look at what we're doing. Because if it shows up on the docks and we don't, you know, and then okay, now I want to hook it up. Well, where are you gonna put it? Uh, and you can put it here where there's nothing. Then you gotta say, okay, you know, rethink this or whatever, but the thing's already here, you know. So anyway, we try to head that off at best with you. Get the appropriate signatures on the form. And again, that is the supervising vice president. And uh, then my boss, Dr. Price, uh, the vice president of administrative services. We have to plan our work, so please plan your project appropriately. And uh, again, you know, some of these projects are can be smaller things, you know, that you know, I want to you know, put up a whiteboard or something. That could be a project as well, and, and it could be hooking up a machine uh, in a machine shop. You know, that's going to need a hundred amp service, pre-phase hundred amp service, which is going to be very expensive. Those are things we need to know. Your project form and project will be reviewed by. Dr. Price, PP of Administrative Services, our construction manager, purchasing and physical plant manager for available utilities and funding and projects. And even could be the involved Thomas group. If you want to put in a computer lab, that could be a project into a room that has nothing. It has no power, it has no data drops. We've been down that road before. We know what that is. So that could be very expensive. So IT, uh, we, we work, work with those guys too to take a look at these things. Uh, these are projects from the first of the year. This is from January to now. And uh, some of these are fairly significant. Some are not quite that much. Lowered the shelving at the Civic Center just to pass fire marshal inspection. We did that, that took about 30 minutes. But then there are others here like uh, perform lead-based testing on the daycare house, you know, that was proposed. And that turned out not to be such a good idea because we did find lead in that building. So we're gonna purpose it for some other purposes uh, in the near future. So we've done about 32 projects since the first of the year. And some of them are pretty significant, some are not so significant. We did install some power at telecommunications for some, uh, to uh, eliminate daisy chaining power strips. That took about what, two, three days? Two Fridays, that's right. We finished that one, two Fridays. Work orders. What is a work order? Okay, this is another device, but it's our internal device. So it's for general maintenance repairs, okay, and preventive maintenance. And this is managed by Nicole, again, Nicole Christmas. Okay, examples could be a toilet stuck running, or toilet not running, or toilet running over. So, you know, these are things that are work orders that you would need to call Nicole. And Nicole's good. She makes a determination about, the, you know, okay, she knows that that is probably, she needs to send somebody pretty quick to take care of this one right here. You know, you know if it's something, she, she's done it enough times, you know, she will call somebody right away on that one. Uh, housekeeping issues, uh, which we call under Joel's uh, domain, but still, it could be uh, any of us could have to do it at any time. Uh, we've had uh, folks got got sick, 
you know, in the vet restroom or hallway or whatever, and we had to send someone over with a spill kit to clean it. You know, we do all that stuff to clean it up. Well, that could be an electrical problem, a receptacle, a power not working, maybe in a classroom or something, you know, breaker, breaker might be tripped, could be something else wrong, but that would be a work order as well. Lighting fixtures not working, bulbs burned out, and that happens across the college, but please call us and let us know when you see those. Heating or air conditioning not working, we get these calls. Or temperature out of limits, it's too hot, too cold, and you know, either one. And there are reasons for that. Heat might not be working, the board might have tripped off, you know, or you know, the air conditioning is not working, and so forth. But again, Nicole is the one to call at extension 7309. She will create a work order or contact a maintenance technician if this is an emergency or what we call 911s, where we need to go right now and take care of this. This is a smiley face at the other end of the phone. When you call 7309, I can't say enough about how good she is in her job. She does a great job. And, uh, and she's that wonderful voice on the phone when she calls, always willing to be of assistance. Nicole printed this for me. This is a kind of a count of work orders as far as what it, what it was, okay? And you can see here, this was preventive maintenance. If you don't know, that's, that kind of comes out of our software automatically. So that's, that generates a work order for, to go change the filters in the air handling unit in this building. That could be a work order. Well, so she does, she takes care of that. Plumbing issues, you can see the piece of the pie as far as what, what, where it came from. Like lock, doors and locks, lighting, HVAC, housekeeping, electrical, routine and corrective, which Nicole tells me that routine is kind of like, I need a picture hung in, a, in an office, you know, and that, that, you know, not the highest priority in the world, okay? Refrigeration, uh, you know, those that's kind of the gamut of work orders that we get in to our department and have. Uh-oh. And that's we say uh-oh sometimes too. <laughs> we we, uh, we say, oh my, what has happened? We maintain a warehouse uh, at our maintenance shop for supplies. Uh, it's also for surplus equipment. This would be some supplies like for restrooms and so forth, toilet paper, paper towels, and paper. Paper products as well we store. And uh, purchasing, uh, they buy a lot of paper, and we have to store it in skids full of it down at the shop. Surplus equipment, furniture, computers, all this stuff is surplus. This is surplus, and like uh, three or four times a year, we have to we had to get rid of this stuff. So we had to either carry it to Raleigh to state surplus or get the OC to come get it for us. They will move it to Raleigh for us. But we have to pay them to do that. But you can see right now, I took these, we took these pictures the other day and our shops get full again. So we're gonna have to put together another surplus trip here pretty soon. <clears throat> we do have, um, and, and, and Tommy's group, they change out computers from time to time. You know, like a computer classroom, we'll end up with skids of computers and devices and so forth that we generally can get a state contractor vendor, state contract vendor, uh, Mike Spivey will usually call one and they will just come pick it up. And we don't have to try, we don't have to take it to Raleigh. They'll just come get it and, uh, and they're on state contract to do that. Our maintenance and grounds folks work out of the maintenance shop. Um, as well, they've got their equipment, mowers and uh, weed eaters and so forth and all that good stuff down there in the main shop. I wanted to talk a little bit about this. Uh, this is a project right here that we did last fall and it's quite interesting. Um, it, it, this was a project form, okay? But this is at the Sanford Police Department firing range, which is out off of Ammons Farm Road, I believe it is, near the uh, new jet port, out of uh, US-1 off Farrell Road. Y'all even know where it's north of Sanford. But anyway, they got a firing range out there that our field and students used to, to do their shooting and then, you know, a uh, pistol firing range to qualify. So we use it and the, the city, uh, this is the tower that they have, a control tower for the firing range. And they've got targets out there that move, that pop up, 
go run a run a path, and they shoot. You know, they, they have practice uh, to uh, sharpen their skills with these targets. So what we did, we we this is kind of the end product. But I'm gonna go through how what all we had to do to do, finish this project. Uh, we had to take the old, uh, we installed this new tower, but in the beginning, we had to uh, take the old one out. It was built by, this was built by the Hornet Cor uh, Correctional Carpentry Program, Ed Taylor down there. We had to do a design for an electrical permit because we had to have power from this facility over to the, the, to the firing range. And we also had interconnecting control wire that had to be taken out of the old building and put into the new building. We had to get an engineer review of our drawings and a PE stamp. A professional engineer had to stamp our drawings. We submitted permits to planning, or applications to the planning department in Sanford, and we got our permits three weeks later. We took out the old tower, we graded the site, formed and poured foundations, assembled three sections, this was three sections of it right here. Installed an electrical service to the tower for lights and controls. And installed control wiring for the target controls for the firing range. All right, we're taking out the old tower. I'm just showing you some pics that we took while we were doing this thing. And you can see Joel's got the tractor, got the fort left. What do you call this thing, Joel? Skytrack. Skytrack. Yeah, it's like a fort left with a real long extension on it. But we took the old tower out. We had to put in some footings for the new tower. So he's digging the footing. We rented this piece of equipment, a back hoe. We formed our, we formed up our foundation footings. Of course, we had to have it inspected that after a footing, uh, or after the footings were built and the rebar was put in. Then we actually went ahead and poured our uh, foundation footings. Joel take a deserve, well deserved break. You're taking break time right here. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. All right, we're preparing to set the tower. This is the new tower. Yep. Whoop. Okay. This was a nervous little operation right here. But we had our we had our footings and our, and our frame at the bottom. This had to match up all the way around. Once you set it down, we had to bolt it in. There it's set. All right. <clears throat> we had to put in a ditch, which we dug with the backhoe from the building that had the service on it to the tower, so we could put conduit and wire in to power up the tower. This, uh, these guys, uh, Eric and Chris, are actually working on the lights. We had to put, these lights were existing lights, but we took all the old wiring off the poles and put in new conduit and new wiring from the pole. There were two poles from the poles to the tower and switches so they could turn them on and off. Zoom in on them a little bit, yeah. This is interconnecting conduits for control wiring and power wiring for the lights and for the controls for the tower. Uh, finally, we actually got it powered up on this date. Of course, we passed our final inspections. And everybody's proud of the work, yeah. <laughs> we all were. That was pretty. That was, that was about three weeks out there, wasn't it? Three weeks away from the college. This was a remote location, north of Sanford. So. Anyway, we finished that one up October seventeenth. Good job. <laughs> what now, Clark? This is one that we did at Hornets uh, uh, back. Uh, earlier this year. We took a space, uh, this is for the w, uh, UAW radio station. This radio station used to be at Triton High School. And we actually, uh, well, okay. But anyway, we took a nursing space and demoed the nursing space in the Etheridge building because those folks had moved out into the Heart Health Science building. 
So we took and demoed, at a, and this was a contract project, which we did the design and we actually managed the project. But we had an external contractor help, to, help us out with this one. But we built walls for two rooms, two broadcast, a broadcast room and a production room. And we did sheetrock paint carpet. I mean, it, you know, it's really nice. You can see the new installation, doors and so forth for this, uh, this space. We put in a heating and air conditioning, a mini split system uh, for the uh, air conditioning for both rooms and then uh, the condensing unit set outside. Uh, and finally finished it up in March, yeah, and I don't, I don't know, I know they were preparing to, they had, uh, Billy Freeman's group had to do some internal wiring, so, anyway, they may be using it now, I don't know if they're broadcasting, I don't think they are yet. Okay, what about these guys, you remember these guys? <laughs> Ripped off Clark. Other projects, recent projects were, the, uh, this was in Pittsburgh, medical assisting. This used to be a daycare space in building 41. We did a renovation and with the assistance of contractors, but we did the design uh, from a re uh, medical assisting from a daycare space. We added walls and for labs and uh, we added uh, rooms, walls for rooms for exam rooms. We renovated the restroom with new fixtures, added cabinets, and refinished the existing cabinetry, and painted the entire facility. And they've got a nice clinical space there that they can use now for the nursing uh, medical assisting program. Wiring and network drops, of course, they were by uh, Tommy's group, a Tommy's contractor, and it uh, turned out to be a good project, and they're using that, uh, that room now for the program. All right, uh, Ben, wants, Ben's gonna speak to you a little bit about the safety regulatory programs that our group is responsible for. Thank you, Ron. <coughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, like everybody knows here, and like Ronnie has uh, said, we cover a lot of ground, uh, we cover a lot of places. Uh, and along with that, there's regulatory and there's some safety related things that we have to do to satisfy and keep everybody safe. Uh, there is quite a few. Um, if you'll look here, one of the big things that we've undertaken since I've been here is uh, the um, NFPA 70E, which is, in this top here you'll see, it's an electrical safety program, um, which is entailed doing a lot of work. We had to go around campus and, and do a lot of marking, um, but this is part of what we have to do to keep our guys safe. Uh, you can see them here, this is a class four. If you look at what we have going on here, um, the arc flash uh, NFPA 70 states some of the equipment that we're gonna have to have, so we had to get in the, the arc flash ready tools and equipment. We had to establish what categories we were gonna use and then once we did that, we had to do a hazard assessment on all of our equipment. Um, around campus, some of the different electrical panels you'll see in different rooms, you'll notice the, speak, the, the stickers up there that classify that, and that actually tells these guys what they're working on. So it's a quick check. When they open a door and they're gonna work on some equipment, it tells them just what they'll need. You can see Eric right here is in class one, okay? This is just a, the regular, I'm not gonna call this entry level, but this is our beginning level. This goes all the way up to the next category, which after that, he would go into a class four. Okay. And just to reiterate what, what Eric's got on, it is to protect you from a arc flash situation. In other words, if they took the panel off of that door, off of that uh, the door off of that panel, like those guys in the picture were doing, and if something happened and a bolt or a nut, a bolt fell off in the back behind the panel and it got energized, it could explode 
and cause an arc flash situation, which is 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 a fire, basically a fire hazard. It's a terrible burning situation. So we have flash rated equipment that we use to protect ourselves from this situation happening and someone getting hurt. So we developed this program uh, back in October of 11. I think it was we started this. We were. Uh, Lucky enough to get funding from the county to purchase this equipment and get an assessment done by outside contractors. So this has been a pretty big deal for us to protect our folks, our electrical workers. Some of the other things that we cover, uh, we have fire protection, we have Thank you, fire mm -hmm. extinguisher testing, we have fire extinguisher training. Uh, we also test and maintain fire alarm panels. We maintain and provide electrical, uh, flammable liquid storage, knox boxes on the newer buildings for the fire departments, and we also do the fire marshal inspections on a yearly basis. Uh -oh. Somebody just got caught. Uh, some of the other things that I do through the physical plant uh, is employee training on a lot of different levels. A lot of this is I work in conjunction with Ms. Stacia Gaines, who helps me. We work together on getting employees trained. Uh, fall protection, uh, training and tile, which you saw in some of the other pictures. Uh, forklift operator and training, which is done on a, uh, some yearly, some bi-yearly basis. Confined space training for some of our enclosed places bloodborne pathogens, uh, which is used for us as well as college employees, and of course personal protective equipment, how to use it, where to get it, and what it's used for. And then of course our arc flash equipment, which is tested on a regular basis, and some part of that equipment is sent out every six months to have the gloves tested to make sure that we don't have any problems with them. Uh, and also we have the lockout tag out, which is, is another way to, when we're working with electrical equipment to make sure that our guys and the people around them and the people here at this college are safe. Uh, regulatory, we're no different than industry or anybody else. We have sharp <laughs> containers, we have paint, oils, uh, we have fluorescent tubes. Uh, we have to store that and maintain it. Uh, that is part of our hazard communication plan. Uh, this plan also contains the MSDS sheets, what are now safety data sheets, medical waste with the sharps and all, and of course the fluorescent bulbs, uh, the tubes, the batteries, and the mercury switches. Finally, we've made it. It's closed. Yeah. What should we do? There you go. <laughs> thank y'all for all your time on behalf of the uh, physical plant. I'd like to thank Ronnie and all the guys for helping put this together. Thank you. If, if you um, could maybe summarize what employees can do to make your work and your job a little bit easier. I know that Ronnie mentioned several things, but um, are there certain things that they can do uh, that will, will make things go a little smoother and not so urgent? And there, there certainly is. One of the most important things that, that everybody can do is to familiarize yourselves with their surroundings. If you work in a building, get used to that building. If you work in several, as you go in these buildings, look at the location of the fire extinguishers. Look in the event that there's an emergency or something. Go ahead and have in your head, I know which way I came in, or I know which way to get out, and familiarize yourself so that in the event that we have an emergency, we can get everybody outside. Another thing to always remember, if there is ever a question whatsoever, dial 911. If for some reason you have a meeting here, 
somewhere and you're having people from outside of this college coming into the meeting, please be sure and do them the courtesy. Let them know where the restrooms are located, where the safety equipment is located, and for instance, for this building, where the stairs are located so that they can exit the building safely. Being informed is one of the strongest things that we can do. Thank you. I'd just like to say too on that note, uh, if you call the call about something, you know, and, and she don't really realize it's an emergency and send someone as soon as you can, but you know, it's not, so I think some folks across the college may think that there is a abundance of folks that are waiting for something to do and, you know, sitting around, but we're not. You know, we're out and about, so we could be across the county, easily across a, a county in Hornet or Chatham, but uh, we'll always have someone here. Might, sometimes it may only be one person, but it, just remember that she really doesn't have an abundance of resources at her fingertips that she can send right away to, to take care of your problem. And if it is an emergency, we're we'll certainly treated as one. Okay. All right. Other questions? Okay. Thank you. We, want to, we appreciate your attendance today. And I